So the library provides services in audio or braille to anybody in the state who can't read standard print. And that includes people who are blind, visually impaired, deaf blind, people who can't hold a book or turn a page, or people with a reading disability. This library, the Washington Talking Book and Braille Library, is part of, we're part of the state library, but we're also part of a network across the country. Um, every state has a library like us. We're all part of the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, part of the Library of Congress. Um, and there are places they can sit and read, or they can go back in the stacks and browse the materials and pull things off and read, or they can use the equipment we have here to read the materials. The other way that our library users are using the library in their element is that Actually, most of them get their library materials at home. We send things by mail, and the library services are completely free. So there are really three modalities of using the books, by mail, by download, or by mobile app. We are part of them being uh, fully active in the world. And there's just sort of this confidence that comes from knowing they're not alone and they have access to materials. They're not left out because they have the same books that other kids are talking about. And that takes away the stigma and says, hey, you can be a person with a disability and be perfectly normal and employed and getting around and doing things. And you're not shoved aside. Our lieutenant governor in this state is blind um, and he's used our, he used our library since he was seven years old and he's a high-powered lawyer and the lieutenant governor in the state and he's on one of our posters and he talks about us all the time and his slogan is from Braille to Yale. Not to sound cliche but I think reading is so essential. I think if you can read you have access to um, just limitless knowledge and ideas and perspective that I think you could really never have if you didn't have the world of books. The people who are who struggle more um, tend to be people who've lost their sight later in life, where they can feel a little lost. We exist to give them back an important part of their life. I've loved seeing um, readers who uh, who can't read normal print um, get to read braille books and read audio books and and just have experiences that they would never have otherwise we s can see so clearly that the when we help somebody get going with the program help them learn how to operate the player or figure out what it is they really want to read you can see like fireworks in their life. I think doing work that has that satisfaction is life-changing for some of us. There's a student um, that I met uh, I guess about nine years ago and he started reading um, large print and then he moved on to audio and he's now um, going into high school and I've gone to plays that he's been in, and he credits using the audiobooks for his ability to act. From the minute I walked in, just everybody is so kind, um, and being in that environment has just increased my own quality of life hugely, um, and getting to give back to this community is really amazing. One of our library patrons was here and he said to me, this is the only library in the world that I've ever been to where I could read every single thing in here. We save people's sanity. <laughs> the days can drag, and a book is a great place to visit.